Hi, welcome to another Unity 5 from scratch tutorial. Uh, these tutorials are for beginners or those very unfamiliar with Unity who want to get a really good overview um, from the very basics. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at operators. And the operators are things that perform mathematical um, operations. So ones that you'll be used to having learnt in school also translate into programming and they work exactly the same way. So I've got this little table here that I'll just go through for you showing you all of the common operators that are used in programming. These operators are the same as you use in mathematics. So you have an equals operator which is also called an assignment which puts a value into a variable and we looked at that in the previous tutorial where we were initializing and also um, putting values into the variable. Um, so you can see here if we go x equals 2 it's going to put the value of 2 into the variable called x. Now um, something you might find quite familiar is that the standards of coding with variables and digits is pretty much the same as algebra. So if you've got algebra down pat, programming is going to be really easy for you. Um, the only difference is in algebra where you could say like 3x equals y, there has to be a specific multiplication symbol between the 3 and the x when you do it in programming. Whereas when you're writing it on paper, uh, you, that's not the case. Okay, so that's the assignment. Then we then have the addition, um, which adds values together. And then we have the subtraction symbol, which takes one value away from the other. And you can see some examples here that if we've got um, y is equal to 15 and z is equal to 5, then z minus y is going to be minus 10. And the minus 10 will go into the variable called x in this case. Now, um, multiplication and division, although they work the same as they do in mathematics, uh, their symbols are different. Because multiplication is, it's an X when we write it on paper, isn't it? But in coding, we also use X as a variable name. So it can become a little bit confusing as to whether you mean multiplication or X. So we use a star symbol to represent multiplication. And with division, there is actually no division sign on the keyboard that would be your you know your straight line with the two dots one above and one below that you would use um, in mathematics on paper we use a forward slash to divide so in this case we've got y divided by z and putting that value into x um, in this case when y is 15 and z is 5 we get a value of 3 so you can see that you can combine different variables with actual hard-coded um, digits or you can just work with variables as long as they've got values in them the math is going to work out all right so let's have a look at how we do this so we've got our um, green cube again and we're going to create some new code um, C sharp and I'm going to call it grow so let's open that up and what grow is going to do is to um, modify the scale of the cube again, but to continue to grow it at a certain rate with each update loop. So let's create a float called growth rate. And let's set that to, let's say 1.5. So that's going to be how much we want to keep adding to or multiplying, I should say, the scale by um, each update loop. So down in the update loop, we're going to go back to the get the local scale. So this dot transform dot local scale equals new vector three. And we're going to set the, um, let's say, just the Y to grow again. So we'll leave the X as it is. And we will modify the 
local scales y by multiplying it by 1.5 we don't want to set it to 1.5 because if we do and i will show you that let's go to growth rate in there and let's just save that let's go back into here and attach that growth rate oh, I've forgotten to put my f on the end of my float which i always do Let's go back into here and let's attach this growth uh, or grow to our cube. Then we check that it's attached and we run it. Okay, so now if we have a look in the transform for the cube, you can see that Y is 1.5. So it's actually set it to 1.5, but we want to use 1.5 to grow it so that it continues to get bigger and bigger each update loop which means we need to instead of setting it to that multiply it by that each time to do that we want to get the local scale y and multiply it by the growth rate rather than set it to that value so to increase the y scale constantly we need to modify growth rate um, and I'm going to use a new variable. So I'm going to create one called float new scale. And new scale is going to be the multiplication between the local scales y and the growth rate. So this dot transform dot local scale dot y multiplied by growth rate. And then it'll pluck out our value here, which might be one and then multiply it by 1.5 and put that value into new scale. And then that value is going to go through back into the local scale by shoving it into this vector three, which goes into here. Then the next time this update function runs, it's going to grab the new value of local scale dot y and multiply it by growth rate and then put that value back into local scale. And the next time it gets the new value out again and it keeps looping around. So let's just save this and run it. Okay, whoa, so our cube grew very, very fast um, just then. So let me just find it and zoom out again and run. And you'll see that it goes really really quickly okay so going back into grow let's just um, make our scale a bit smaller let's put 1.005 in there so it grows not so fast and go back into here and run it okay so now you can see the effects of constantly doing the multiplication and putting that value back into the, that um, new scale variable which is then used as the y value for local scale um, which updates it and then multiplies it by growth rate again and continues to do that for as long as your program is running now we can also use um, our operators to modify the position of the uh, cube so let's create another script c sharp and let's call it move and let's just open that up okay and what we're going to do with the move script is to change the let's say x position of the um, cube so let's go into the update and we're going to go this dot trans form dot position dot um, x plus how much we want to move it each time so let's just move it by one and see how we go from there that might be too much now this value here um, we want it to set it to the position of the cube so we're going to have to again use our vector 3 construct so first of all let's put this equation and the value from it into new pos x variable uh, and then we can use that new pos x in an equation um, this dot transform dot position equals new vector three um, so rather than the scale we're now moving um, the position of it so new pos x because we want the x which is in the first position 
Um, now, the Y position and the Z position of the cube, we can't set to 1 and 1 um, because it might not be at 1 and 1. We want it to remain in the same Y and, and X, uh, sorry, Z positions that it's already in. So we can just reset its positions. Dot position dot Y and also its Z position to exactly what it already is. So there's no changes happening to those. And then semicolon. So this will move the X position of the cube by one with each update. So let's save that. Let's go back to our code. Let's attach the move script to our cube, which has also got the grow. It's gonna be growing and moving at the same time. So let's just run that. Okay, so it's moving really quickly as I expected. So let's go back to the move. Let's change how much we're moving by 0 0.1. Save it, switch back. Once again, I've forgotten to put the F on the end. <laughs> I hope this is a lesson for everybody watching. Okay, run this. And there we go. And it's moved out of the camera, but you can still see it here. It's actually growing. And moving at the same time and if you look over in the transform even though it's gone off the camera and out of view you can see that it's scaling in the Y and that it's still moving in the X so the code is working as you would have expected it to okay so um, that's basically operators there's not a lot more I can show you about operators without getting quite complex um, and we'll start to look at some more operators and uh, more complex operations in the next tutorial, which is going to start introducing logic and if then else statements. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening and I'll talk to you about logic in the next tutorial of Unity from Scratch.